Welcome to this tutorial for OpenFront IO, where we're going to cover everything you need to know about how to play the game. Broadly speaking, OpenFront is a PvP battle royale where you build economy, forge alliances, and launch bombs in order to dominate the map. And there's a lot that goes into this. When you first spawn in, you're going to want to click to select a spawn and click to start attacking the empty area around you. Keep in mind that OpenFront has three different types of terrain, plains, highlands, and mountains, each of which are harder to capture and should factor into your spawn choice. As you begin to expand, you'll notice your control panel in the bottom left, which has your attack slider, which controls the percentage of troops that you're sending out to attack with. 100% will send out all of your troops, while 1% will send out a very small attack. Above this, you'll see your population bar, which has your current population, your cap, and your current growth rate. To explain your growth rate very simply, when the number is green, it means your population growth is increasing. When it's yellow, it's decreasing. And this all works based on a bell curve that currently caps out at around 41% of your max population. Now, as you come to the end of your initial expansion, you'll begin to encounter other entities in the game, of which there are three different types. Bots, nations, and players. Bots are generally the weakest and cannot build infrastructure. Nations or NPCs are a bit strong and can build infrastructure and bomb, and players are going to be your biggest competition in the long run. As OpenFront is a diplomatic game, you also have the ability to form alliances and betray other players. Just keep in mind that if you betray someone, you get a significant defense debuff for 30 seconds. Now, the real core of OpenFront comes from its infrastructure and bombs, of which there are many options. Cities are the backbone of your ground troops and increase your max population by 25k. Ports automatically send out trade ships, which allows you to grow your economy and also give you the option to create warships. Warships in particular fulfill a number of roles, including stealing trade ships not inbound to allied ports, attacking other warships, and sinking transports. Factories allow you to establish train networks between cities and ports, and each train sent between these areas gives you an increase in gold. In particular, you get increased gold by trading with neighbors and allies, so keep that in mind. Defense posts fortify borders and protect a small area around them, increasing the casualty and slowing the push rate of enemy attackers. SAM launchers also serve a defensive function, protecting a small area around them from enemy nukes. In order to launch nukes, you evidently need a missile silo, which allows you to send a bomb every so often. In open front, there are three types of nuclear weapons, atom bombs, hydrogen bombs, and the MIRV. Atom bombs create a small explosion and are generally used to target specific infrastructure. Hydrogen bombs affect a much larger area and do significant pop damage to your opponents. And MIRVs are the ultimate doomsday weapon, blanketing enemy bases with significant amount of MIRV missiles. Each of these types of arms has their own pros and cons, so keep that in mind when you're using them. I can also mention that all buildings but defense posts have different levels if you place them on top of each other, which basically serves as multiple of the same building. If you have a level two city, it's the same as having two cities in two different places. If you have a level two missile silo, it's just the same as being able to launch two missiles right at the same time. The one exception to this rule is the SAM launcher, which was recently updated so that increasing its levels also increases its range. And I can also say there's a few different ways to build buildings and launch bombs. The first is the radial menu. The second is the control or the command left click menu. And you can also use hotkeys, which are programmable on the main page in order to launch strings of bombs or spam out buildings. Besides all this, there's a few other things to keep in mind, including that you can send transport ships by using your radial menu, and the leaderboard and your notification menu in the bottom right are each filterable by the different categories shown. Besides this, you can also cancel outgoing attacks, though there is a 25% retreating cost. And if you click on the information tab, you can see various components about your alliance timer, their relationships, as well as turning off trade and other communication options in game. Lastly, your win condition for free-for-all is 80% of the map. Best of luck on the battlefield.